Okay, so thank you for joining our 30 minute class today. If we haven't met, my name's Holly. This is a 30 minute yoga class that is specifically um, about targeting neck and shoulder pain. And the one prop you might want is some sort of um, towel because at some points we'll do some fun shoulder stuff like this. Um, before we get started, I'll just say like I have chronic neck pain, which is part of why I'm excited to teach this class. Um, I grew up with scoliosis, and then when I was in my early 20s, I had two car crashes back to back um, that I walked away from both of them, and at the time I thought I was fine. But in retrospect, I think um, it did impact my back on top of having scoliosis, and it was also traumatic, right? And um, one thing I know is that like we carry you know, our emotions or our stress or a trauma in our body. And for me, the place where I carry most stress is in my neck and my shoulders. So um, at least once a month, I'll wake up and I like can't move my neck. Um, yoga doesn't make everything better, but for me, it has helped tremendously. So today I just want to share a 30 minute class inspired by all of the things that have helped me. Um, it's specifically done so that if you are currently in a state where you like can barely move your head, you can still do the class, right? And you'll just slowly get a little bit of range of motion back into your body. So um, again, you might want a mat and a towel nearby, but I'm going to set the towel aside for now. So we're going to start with two versions of a breathing exercise. And if you do 26 and two yoga with me, um, one of them will be super familiar and the other one will be like kind of familiar. So the idea, it's a little bit like a standing cat cow. You're going to interlace your fingers and bring your hands behind you at the nape of your neck. So hands just below your hairline. I'll show you first and then we'll practice together. As you inhale, you're going to open your chest wide and look up towards the ceiling. You'll inhale through your nose. And as you exhale, you're going to slightly bend your knees, <sighs> exhale through your mouth, drop your head, and you're going to try to bring your elbows together. So inhale, opening up, looking up, maybe head back, and exhale, elbows together. Now on those days where you can barely move your head back, I find having a little bit of support with the knuckles on the neck actually helps you move the spine a little bit more, at least it does for me. So we'll start feet close together, interlace your fingers, bring your hands just below your hairline, nape of the neck. I like to like actively push my hands into my neck and this helps to calm my neck nerves at least. Okay, so we'll begin as you inhale through your nose, open your chest wide, elbows up, look up towards the ceiling, press your hips slightly forward. Exhale, suck your stomach in, bend your knees a little bit, drop your head down and squeeze elbows together. Inhale through the nose, open up. Looking up, maybe looking back. Exhale through your mouth, stomach in. Fold forward, try to bring elbows together. I'll show you from the side. Inhale, opening up, try to squeeze shoulders together, open your chest. Exhale, stomach in. Round your spine, squeeze elbows together. Inhale, open up. Exhale, curl forward. Two more. Inhale, chest wide, look up, maybe even look back. Exhale, stomach in. Drop your head down, use your hands to get chin closer to chest. Inhale, opening wide, breathe deep. Exhale, stomach in, drop your head. Good, slowly come up and return to neutral. So that's the first breathing exercise. And the second set, if you do 26 and two yoga with me, is pranayama deep breathing. This is one of those um, breathing exercises that again, on the days where I wake up and I can barely move my head, um, this one is a little painful, but it always works for getting through some neck tightness. So I will show you, I'll show you from the side and then we'll do it together. Like traditionally, the idea is to lift your elbows up and then drop your head back. So triceps are parallel to the floor, elbows touch away from your body. But when you have limited range of motion, it can look like this. You just bring the elbows up and then you bring your head back as far as it goes. Maybe just looking up towards the ceiling and elbows touch. So if your head can drop all the way back, then sure, elbows are lifted. But if you're working with limited range of motion in your neck, then the elbows can just touch here. Okay, great. So feet close together, interlock your 10 fingers, cross your thumbs, clear your knuckles underneath your chin. We'll do two of these. Inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. Begin, inhale, chin down and arms up. Lift your elbows up, fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up. Head back, arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, chin down. Exhale, head up. 
Inhale, head down, breathe in through your nose, down through your throat to the very bottom of your lungs. Exhale, head up as you exhale, open your mouth wide, make an H A, sound head back, arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down, keep the weight in your heels, root down through your heels, stretch up through your spine. Exhale, head up, keep your knuckles under your chin like glue, squeeze your palms together, wrists together, forearms, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. So get it first. If you have limited range of motion in your neck, that's okay. Just lift your elbows up. Exhale, head up. And then maybe just look up towards the ceiling. As far as your head looks up, reach your arms forward, push your elbows together. Inhale, head down. As you progress through the breathing exercise, as you progress through class, you might get a little bit more range of motion back in your neck. Exhale, head up, but you're never forcing your body, right? So if it hurts, don't do it. Head back, arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. The number one rule of yoga is ahimsa. It means do no harm. Exhale, head up. So there are times in yoga where you might be a little uncomfortable, but you're never going to a point of pain. Inhale, head down. Make sure to bring the chin all the way down. Look straight ahead, lift your elbows all the way up. Exhale, head up. Slowly push your head back, squeeze your palms together, wrists together, forearms, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. Keep your abdominal wall engaged, the stomach in, glutes tight, elbows up. Exhale, head up. Make sure you're not back bending, right? So just your head is moving. Keep shoulders over hips, hips over heels, weight in the heels. Inhale, head down, making this the deepest breath so far, breathing into the top of the lungs, middle of the lungs, bottom of the lungs, full lungs. Exhale, head up. In our day-to-day -day life, we don't really use the full lung capacity, but the lungs need to be worked out like any other part of the body. Inhale, head down, last breath. Spine a little longer, elbows a little higher, lungs a little fuller, suck your stomach in, breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up, take your time, slowly head back as far as it goes, slowly arms forward, elbows touch. Good, slowly bring your arms down and look straight ahead. Wonderful. So we'll continue with some arm motions here. Start by inhaling your arms overhead, looking up. Bring your hands together, exhale, bring your hands down through your heart center. Two more, inhale, lift your arms up, looking up. Exhale, hands down to your heart center. Good, inhale, lift your arms up, look up. Exhale, this time bend your knees, fold forward, put your hands on the floor, and we'll come into a tabletop position. We're gonna take some cat cows. So for cat cows, it's similar, you know, in the breathing exercise, right, we were moving our neck and in cat-cow, we're gonna move our whole spine in the same rounding and then arching. So tabletop, shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. For cat pose, think like an angry cat. As you exhale, you're gonna pull your belly in and round your spine up towards the ceiling, drop your head down, cat pose. As you inhale, drop your stomach down and lift your chest up. This is cow pose. Think like when you see cows, how they have big stomachs coming down. That's what we're doing here, cat pose. Press your hips closer to your ribs, spread your shoulders wide, drop your head down, look for your abdomen. Cow pose, drop your stomach down, stick your butt up, look up towards the ceiling, open your chest, squeeze shoulders together. One more round, exhale, cat pose, meow, round your spine, stomach in, push the floor away from you. Cow pose, moo, drop your belly down, lift your chest, spread your shoulders wide, look up, nice throat stretch. Good, and come back to a neutral position. Next, we'll take a thread the needle. So staying in your tabletop position, as you inhale, reach your right arm up overhead, looking up. And as you exhale, bring your right hand through left arm and left knee, your right shoulder to floor, right ear on the floor. You can stay here with your left hand on the floor for support or lift your left arm up and drape it behind you. So this is a great way to stretch the shoulders, but it can be too intense for some people. Um, if thread the needle does not work for you today, no problem, it doesn't always work for me either. I'll give you an alternative. You can bring your right arm across your body, bend your left arm up and then drop shoulders down. You get that same shoulder stretch without putting any weight on it. So we're either holding here in the shoulder stretch or and thread the needle, try to keep your hips forward, hips over knees. We'll take three more breaths here. Slow inhale. Slow exhale. Good. 
lot of opening up the body is just patience. You make a shape, you hold it, you just allow things to slowly open up. We're gonna reverse out. So if you have your left arm draped behind you in a bind, start by releasing that bind and place your left hand on the floor close to your head. Everybody together, unthreading the needle, inhale, reach your right arm up, looking up overhead. Exhale, right hand down. This time we're gonna do um, cat cow, but with slightly different hands. So this time I'm gonna encourage you to have, it's a little bit hard to see with my camera angle. You want your fingers pointing towards you and your wrists pointing away from you. You might need to bend the elbows a little bit. This is a nice wrist stretch. Then we're gonna do the same cat cow three times, rounding your spine and arching your spine. Sometimes this feels like a lot and sometimes it doesn't feel like much, but simply the repetition of moving your back Moving your neck and shoulders helps everything to open up a little bit more after class, right? So sometimes we have a great time in class, sometimes class is like, oh my gosh, um, but it's how you feel after, how it affects the rest of your day that's most important. Good. Okay, when you've done your cat cows, bring your hands back to the original position with fingers pointing forward, wrists pointing in, and we'll do the other side of thread the needle. So as you inhale, lift your left arm up, looking up overhead. Exhale, thread the needle, bring your left arm through right arm, right hand close to your face, left ear on the floor, option to stay here or lift your right arm up and drape it behind you for a half bind. And on this side, if this shoulder thing is not working for you, no problem. Come on up and I'll give you the alternative of draping your left arm over you, bending the right arm up, and then you get that same shoulder stretch. Try to even out your shoulders. Otherwise, staying here for three breaths. In and out to your nose. Okay, if you have your right arm behind you in a half bind, start by placing your right hand back on the floor close to your face. And everybody together, reversing out, inhale, unthread the needle, reach your left arm up towards the ceiling, looking up. Exhale, left hand back down. Good, come to a seated position. You can sit crisscross applesauce or whatever works for you. We're gonna work a little bit more into the neck. So just start first by rolling your shoulders forward a couple times. Rolling your shoulders back a couple times, maybe up and down, maybe shimmy. Okay, and then just drop your shoulders. As you inhale, stretch up out of the crown of your head. As you exhale, slowly bring your right ear towards right shoulder. And for an extra stretch, you can place your right hand on top of your head and gently pull down. You're welcome to then push your left arm away from you, fingers pointing up. Now you should really feel it in the left shoulder. So you're always welcome to keep your hands down by your side or deepen the stretch by using your arms. Good. I feel this stretch all the way up to my fingertips on my left hand. So the nerves in our neck like go into our fingers sometimes, right? So it's not uncommon when you have neck pain for it to come out in like your thumb or your index finger, which I always think is interesting. If you feel this stretch all the way into your fingers, I'm right there with you. Good. So if you have your hand, hands up, slowly release your hands and then drop your head down, chin to chest. You have an option to stay here with your hands at your sides, or you can interlace your fingers, put your hands on the back of your neck and use your arms to bring the head down more. Do try to keep the chest up. So it's just the neck moving, maybe elbows closer together, maybe not. You're not forcing your head down. But if it helps you to get a little extra oomph with the hands, feel free. It's gentle compression to the throat and extension to the spine as you breathe. Good. If you have your hands on your head, release your hands first. And this time, slowly roll left ear to left shoulder, stretching the right side neck. Again, you can stay here with your hands on your knees, or you can place your left hand on left head and maybe push the right hand out and really feel the right side neck stretch. Drop your shoulders, lift your chest. Notice if you're leaning to one side, try to evenly distribute your body weight on your sit bones as you breathe. Good, if 
if you have, if you're using your hands here, place your hands back down first, slowly roll down chin to chest, slowly roll up, looking forward. And now we're going to open the throat and bend the neck. So you have an option to keep your hands on your knees and look up and maybe drop your head back all the way. A couple other options I'll give you. You can place your hands behind you for support and drop your head back. Or if your neck is feeling tense, again, one of my tricks is to interlace my fingers at the nape of my neck, almost like a neck brace. And now you might be able to slowly bring your head back. So from the side, it looks like this. Sometimes when I'm doing 26 and two yoga and I, the pranayama deep breathing is too intense for my neck, I'll actually do this to drop my head back. So then maybe slowly head goes back, never forcing the neck. Chest up eyes open, shoulders down. Good, slowly roll your head back up, coming back to center. Next, we'll inhale, stretch up. Exhale, start to look over your right shoulder. So we've moved the neck, right, left, forward, backward, and now we're twisting. For this, try to keep your shoulders and hips even. If it feels good, you're welcome to like use a hand, but I actually like to keep my hands down for this one because it's just the neck spine that's twisting. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your right shoulder twist. Good, slowly return to center, take your time. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your left shoulder and twist. I should have mentioned this earlier, but I'm not mirroring you. So right now I'm looking to the left. It might look like I'm looking to the right. Um, you are welcome to follow my body or my words. Know that in general, I will do the right side first, but it is up to you which side you do first. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your left shoulder. Keep the shoulders and hips facing in front of your mat. Good, slowly unwind. Another thing I'll share with you about neck tightness is often when I re-injure my neck, it's because I'm quickly exiting postures. So I just encourage you, if you know that you have neck and shoulder tightness, really go slowly out of postures. And that um, is a nice way to like safely move your spine. Okay, so we've moved our neck a bunch of ways. Now we're gonna get the whole upper body involved. So place your right hand close to your right hip. And as you inhale, reach your left arm up overhead. Now, if this is easy for you, you're always welcome to like come down onto your forearm, but if that hip is lifting way up, I like to stay lifted. Good, you have an option to look forward or to look up, root down through both sit bones and breathe. Nice side stretch. Good, if you're looking up towards the ceiling, start by looking forward again, and then bring your left hand down to the floor, sweeping the arm forward, place your left hand by your left hip and lift your right arm up, stretching up. Root down through your right hip, drop your shoulders down, lift your chest up, option to look forward or look up. Breathe. Good, if you're looking up, look forward again and then slowly sweep your right arm down. This time left arm down as well and maybe start to drop down, like maybe forearms to floor, maybe not. Drop your head down. Push the floor away from you. So you want to feel the whole spine rounding. And the options of pushing the floor away from you or bringing forearms to floor might help you round your spine more, but shoulders out of the ears, abdomen in, drop your head and breathe. Good, carefully roll back up, take your time. This time, place your hands behind you, puff up your chest, stick your butt out a little bit, look up. And if it feels good, drop your head back for a back bend. So this time, really whole spine moving, whole front of the body stretching, back bending, eyes open, chest up. Good, and slowly, carefully come back up. And same thing, now we're gonna do a spine twist and we're gonna move our arms as well. So as you inhale, reach your right arm up, stretch up. Exhale, place your right hand on the floor close behind you like a second spine. Inhale, reach your left arm up. Exhale, place your left hand on right thigh. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your right shoulder and twist. And you can keep your right hand behind you. If your balance feels good, try catching your left thigh with your right hand for a half bind. Inhale, stretch up, abdomen in, spine straight. Exhale, look over your right shoulder, twist, twist, twist. 
Good. If you have the half bind, start by releasing your right hand. Put your right hand on the floor in front of you. Pardon me, your right hand behind you. And then slowly unwind, releasing the grip on the right knee. Okay, let's do the other side. Inhale, lift your left arm up first. Exhale, place your left hand close behind you. Inhale, reach your right arm up, stretch up. Exhale, place your right hand on your left knee. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your left shoulder, twist. And again, you can keep your left hand behind you or do the half bind. The reason why I like to stretch up first, one of the tricks to spine mobility is traction. Like before you move right, left, back, forward, or twist, I always encourage stretching up. Creating space between your vertebrae first will always give you an advantage when you're trying to move your back. So inhale, stretch up, abdomen in, super long spine. Exhale, look over your left shoulder, twist, twist, twist. Good. If you have your left hand on your right thigh, start by releasing the bind, place your left hand close behind you again, and then slowly release your right hand, slowly coming back to center. Good. Okay. Put your hands on the floor in front of you. We're going to tuck your toes under, lift your hips up for a down dog. From here, open your feet wide and start to bring your hands in towards your feet. Now, I recommend taking a big step here. This is a wide-legged forward fold, so my feet are way wider than my mat. You have an option to keep your hands on the floor in front of you, or for a shoulder rinse, interlock your fingers, and then start to drop your head and reach your arms forward. So I'm showing you from the front right now, but I'll also show you from the side. A wider step will help you out. Bringing the weight forward into the toes gets you that hamstring stretch too. Now my forehead's touching the floor because I have a long torso and short legs. Your forehead might not touch the floor, that's okay, but do know that taking a bigger step usually makes most of our heads come closer to the floor. Okay, if you're doing that shoulder rinse, start by bringing your hands back to your hips, stomach in, and we're gonna slowly come up. So push your hips forward, coming up into your wide leg. Good, from here, pivot on your heels to one side of the room. I'm gonna pivot to the right side of the room. Turn your back toes in to a 45 degree angle, press your left hip forward, and then bend your right leg for a lunge. Option to stay here or have your hands behind you, fingers interlaced, and then try to slide your fingers down your thighs. You look up towards the ceiling, so again, we're opening through the chest and squeezing the shoulders together. It's also a nice way to stretch the back calf, try to keep two heels on the floor, press the left hip forward, bend the right knee to sit down more. Good. If you're looking up towards the ceiling, if you're sliding your fingers down your thigh, slowly come back up into a spine neutral position, straighten your right leg, pivot to the front, and we're going to do another forward fold, folding forward, in that nice shoulder rinse, maybe bigger step, maybe smaller step, maybe getting your head closer to the floor, maybe not. Roll forward, squeeze your thighs, breathe. Great way to squeeze through the shoulders, open the chest, and you're letting gravity do the work here, right? You're not like pulling on your feet, it's gravity that's lengthening your neck, lengthening your spine. And if you're doing that shoulder rinse, start by bringing the hands back to the hips, push your hips forward, slowly come up, and we're going to pivot to the other side. So I'm going to pivot to the left, left toes pointing forward, right toes at a 45 degree angle, press your right hip forward, bend your left knee, press your right hip forward, bend your left knee, lunge. Option to stay here or interlace your fingers behind you and try to slide your hands down your right thigh, looking up, breathe through your nose, very proud posture. Good. If you're sliding your interlaced fingers down your thigh, slowly come up, returning to a spine neutral position, straighten your left leg, pivot on your heels one more time, folding forward, shoulder rinse. And if your head's touching the floor, maybe a little bit of a smaller step so that the neck can drop even more. Maybe hands a little closer to the floor in front of you. Good. If you have your hands in the shoulder ends, put your hands on your hips and then put your hands in front of you, walk your feet back in and come back into a seated position, sitting crisscross applesauce. Now I mentioned that you might want a towel at one point in class and this is the time. Our shoulders are fairly warmed up so now we're going to do another shoulder rotation exercise. I have fairly flexible shoulders despite 
having a tight neck. So my towel is kind of short, but you might want like a whole blanket, a long towel. So the idea is you're gonna grab your towel at either end and you're gonna try to rotate your shoulders. And this is something you can do every day, like especially after a hot shower when your body's a little bit warmed up. You don't need to do this for 10 minutes. In fact, I wouldn't recommend doing it for 10 minutes, but doing it for like a minute a day um, is a really great way to open your shoulders. And if you do practice yoga regularly, um, this motion will open up a lot of more advanced postures like king pigeon, dancer pose. As you get more flexible, you make the um, length of your towel shorter and then it'll work into the shoulders more. Good. Okay, wonderful. So after you've done a couple of those, set your towel aside. But again, that's something you can do anytime, just a couple times a day and it'll open the shoulder. Next, we're gonna do a shoelace pose with eagle pose variation. So start by straightening your left leg in front of you and then cross your right knee on top of your left knee. So this is half shoelace and you can stay here or if you're able, bend your left knee and now you're in shoelace pose, right knee on top of the left knee, legs out to either side. If this doesn't work, no problem. Half shoelace, do this. And this is actually a great way to stretch your hamstring. So it's not like less of a posture, it's just different. So if your right knee is on top of your left knee, like mine is, just keep that in mind. We're gonna do eagle arms. Inhale, bring your arms overhead. And exhale, bring your right arm under your left arm. So if your right knee is on top, you want your right elbow on bottom. If your left knee is on top, you want your left elbow on bottom. Start by giving yourself a hug, maybe going back and forth, side to side. And if this is easy, see if you can interlace your fingers or even bring hands together, thumbs towards your face, pinkies towards um, the front of your mat. Now in 26 and 2 yoga, we often pull the elbows down, which is a great way to like open the shoulder blade scapula before we do head to knee pose. But in a lot of styles of yoga, we lift the arms up. And I think this is actually like a really delightful shoulder stretch. So try lifting the arms up and then if it feels good, fold forward. So you get that nice stretch to your outer right thigh. We're just going to hold here for three breaths. Breathing in and out through your nose. Good. Okay. If you're folding forward, slowly come up. Start by uncrossing your arms, bring your arms overhead, arms down by your sides. And then we're going to switch the legs. And if you'd like it to add a flourish, you can make it like a showgirl thing where you're like, we okay so other knee on top you don't have to but i think it's fun and again you can have your bottom right leg straight out in front of you with your left knee on top for half shoelace or eventually bend the right knee and if that neither of those works just do like a wide-legged crisscross applesauce okay from here if your left knee is on top inhale arms overhead exhale left arm under right arm left under right grab your shoulders give yourself a hug rock side to side good and then you can stay here or try eagle grip, fingers interlaced or hands in prayer, lift the elbows up and then fold forward. Holding here for three breaths. Okay, when you're ready, slowly come back up. Start by uninterlacing the fingers, bring your arms overhead, arms down. I had one more trick up my sleeve. Well, I have a couple of tricks up my sleeve. I had one more trick up my sleeve, but I want to be mindful of the time and of your time because I know that it's a work day. So we're gonna finish in final savasana here and I'll try to do this again and show even more neck and shoulder stretches because I have a lot of them. When you're ready, turn and lie down on your back for final savasana next time. So there's so many yoga postures that are good for working out the neck and shoulders, but sometimes like when we wake up with a stiff neck, yoga just seems a little bit daunting. So just know that, um, you know, work with the range of motion that you have in your body. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't look like we're doing much and yet you can feel it, right? And if you're feeling it, but you're moving a millimeter, I'm right there with you a lot of days and that's okay. It's really, truly not about how it looks externally. It's about how it's affecting you internally, right? So as long as you're getting a stretch, even if you're barely looking up towards the ceiling, that's wonderful, right? That's why we do yoga. We'll finish with three breaths in and out through the nose. You're welcome to place one hand at your chest, heart center, and one hand on your stomach. As you inhale, feel your chest and belly rise. 
As you exhale, let everything soften down. Inhale. Exhale. Breathe in. Breathe out. Notice any lingering tension you're carrying. Try to let it go through your exhale breath. A lot of neck and shoulder tightness is simply that, neck and shoulder tightness, but sometimes it's connected to like our emotions as well or current events or whatever that is, right? So just keep that in mind and be gentle with yourself and know that by moving our body, by becoming a little bit more embodied, we actually like get out of the fight, flight or um, freeze response. And actually just by moving our body, even if it doesn't look like much, it's a lot easier to calm the parasympathetic nervous system. And then we stop holding tension in those places where we hold tension, right? So it's not just about stretching the neck, it's about really like getting in tune with your body helping your body to relax through your breath. Slow inhale. Exhale, let everything go. Picture yourself in perfect, radiant health. 